What else do you think are really important for students to focus on applying graduation to be successful? I think as students are in school, they, they need to start saying, what do I want to do in the industry? And you can't say, I want to be a storyboard artist and a rigger and a, care and a modeler and I want to do this. I want to run the render farm and I want to dance and sing and paint and be an astronaut, right? <laughs> and that's, that's an exaggeration, but that's pretty much what happens. And when I was doing that, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that. When I was like, I want to do this, 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 I was unfocused. And the recruiters, they look at my portfolio and they're like, I don't, this kid's talented, but he's all over the place. I don't know what to do with them. When I said, this is a problem, how do I fix it? And then I went back and I just said, I want to be a character animator. And I focused on that and I made sure that all of my marketing, and marketing, by the way, is your reel, and your portfolio, and now that's your website and any social media sites that stem from that. So as soon as I said character animator and I made it very clear what I was, I got the job. You know, and it's, it's, it's focused in, in, in knowing what you want. And if you're like, I don't know, I don't know. And when I mentor students, I make them pick one goal. And the minute they do that, they find success. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's like a magic trick. So they need to know the different disciplines within animation. Yeah, there's... So you said there's how many streams? Quite a few. There's about 38 jobs, and that's by no means comprehensive. But that's like a broad, general, you know, you have a rigger, you have a character modeler, you have a layout artist, you have the producer, you have the audio engineer, right? You have the, you know, the guy that, that uh, uh, runs the render farm, you, you know, you, the, the writer, you know, there, there, it, the list goes on and on and on. And so I meet people, they're like, yeah, I'm an animator. I go, really, what do you do? Like, well, actually, I, I, I run the recording booth for, for audio voiceovers, you know, for animated audio voiceovers. Okay. But the average person, if they were to describe what that person did, they go, oh, he's an animator. Oh, he's not. He's a sound engineer. But that person started by being an animator. And then because they were more gravitated towards, you know, working on a short film, they were like, I actually like doing the sound design. They became a sound designer from it. So the uh, animation is kind of like the gateway drug. You know, you, you see the, the, the Pixar movie go, I want to do that. But when you're at Pixar, there's, there's all these jobs you can do just to get into Pixar. So let's say you're trying to be an animator and you're not the best animator. You're a better rigger. Well, is it worth your time to keep trying to be the best animator when it's far easier for you to be the best rigger? Because you're naturally better at that. You know? So I see a lot of people... They want to go here, but really it's like, no, 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 this is for you. And then once they realize that's for them, they blossom. So it's, it's you know, an, animation students need to have those, like if you're applying for a college, you need to have that core foundation of drawing, right? You have to have your, por your portfolio has to show that you can do live drawing and you understand basic movement. And, and more than basic movement, you understand how to bring opposed to life. You don't have these stiff drawings, but you have these fluid drawings. And they're just basic, simple formulas that, that you can learn to do. But once you can do that, you can show that you can communicate visually. Because you've got to remember, film is a visual medium. So if you can speak the language of visuals, you can obviously use film. You can work in film to communicate those ideas. So the minute a student says, I want to be in the animation industry, they have to show that they can draw and be visual. That's enough to, to show you in your portfolio that the school can work with you, right? They're not looking for the best artist in the world because that you need school, you need training to do that. They're looking for somebody that can just visually communicate. So the minute you can say, hey, when I draw, it's not a bunch of scribbles. It actually, you can tell that there's, you know, it's a figure and there's some form there. And I, I know the simple tricks to turn the space to really use my line work to describe on a flat piece of paper this 3D idea. And that's really all it is. And once you can do that, you got your foot in the door. Now you're at a college, you're, you're studying animation. Then you need to decide, okay, I got four years, sometimes three, sometimes two. If you're unlucky, one, but I recommend at least three years of learning this. Then you can say, okay, let me spend the first year studying the foundation. Let me, let me learn about drawing. Let me learn about design. Let me learn about filmmaking. And then once you get to that second year, you can say, okay, let me, let me really focus on animation and, and rigging and modeling, right? But by the time you get to the third year, you need to be razor focused. I'm going to be a rigger. Or I'm going to be a 3D modeler. Or I'm going to be character animator. Or I'm going to be an effects animator. That third and fourth year, you need to study that thing that you want to get your first job in. And I was lucky in my career, 
I got my foot in the door being a character animator, and I did that for about seven years. And then that stemmed off to two different careers. One where I was directing commercials, and well, actually three careers. One I was directing commercials, live action and animated commercials. One I was being an animation director, so I got to be an animation director for big commercials and big feature films. And the third one I was doing what's called previs or pre-visualization, pre which is essentially making 3D storyboards. And that was really fun because I'd sit with some of the biggest directors in Hollywood and we would design their action or effects sequences. So I'm sitting there with like these people who are just like legends and they're telling me how they think as a filmmaker. Now I'm a filmmaker. So I'm basically getting, they're paying me to go to grad school as far as I'm concerned, right? So it was just an amazing experience. And, and because I got my foot in the industry and I got good at it, that, that, that skill set of animation and learning computer and having the desire to, to do more than that, I did my own films, on, live action films on the side. And because I had that skill set, I can now do the previs. I can now do the animation directing. And that's how you build a career. You, you, you have your long-term goal, but you have that, you figure out strategically, what's the easiest way I can get my foot in the door? And then you learn the skills and you market yourself so you can make that happen. My students are just entering into college, uh, and for animation students, they're finding it so challenging to get into the better programs like CalArts or Sheridan, for example, uh, and there's a lot more that are springing up now, as you mentioned. Um, but what they're often finding is they cannot get into animation right out of high school. Um, they at least need two years of college education first oftentimes even more. It's like these kids have more than a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's really a commitment to build the skills that even get you in to an appropriate college program. Now, what I'm hearing from you is that it's important to get that foundation first in first and second year. That You do need to kind of study the whole umbrella of animation to kind of know where your skills are and, and what your focus would be for your career so you can focus that in the final couple of years of your study. So I guess I'm curious, like students that are coming to me, they kind of, they want to know, well, what skills really are important to get in to a good program and how important is that program to, to be able to be an animator? Okay. So maybe it depends a bit on what stream they want to go into, but they may not even know yeah. what the streams are. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I, I th where does a, a high school student start? So the map I would give a high school student, if I was going to mentor you, if you were sitting here and you're like, I want to be an animator, I would say step one is have your goal in mind. Why do you want to do this? If you don't, like I, I couldn't think of doing anything else. Like there was literally nothing else for me. I would rather starve and wither away in a corner if I didn't get to do what made me happy. So if you're not at that level of commitment, go do something else. Like right off the bat, you can waste your money, you can waste your time, but it's not going to work out for you. You have to be like, I can't imagine doing, I will die if I don't do this. That's the level of passion. I know it sounds exaggerated, but I'm serious. That's the level of passion you need. All the people that I know, you know, I, in my class, there are about 20 people now that are really doing well. You know, they're off in the industry, they're directing movies for Pixar, and they're doing all this great stuff. And those are the people that all they did was animate or draw or, you know, they were just creative. Where the other people that were, you know, smoking pot or, you know, playing soccer every day or, you know, whatever they're doing, they're not in the industry anymore. You know, the people that were so passionate and dedicated, those are the people that are crushing it right now. So the first thing, step one, is understand that or really honestly check your level you know where are you at with your passion if it's not you know for one to ten if you're not at least at a seven do something else you know go and get Maya get the student edition of Maya fart around have that be your hobby but please do not invest four years of your life all that emotional turmoil and all that money I mean where a good school is going to cost you at least 10,000 bucks a year at least you go to something like CalArts you're looking at 40,000 I think don't quote me on it but it's between 30 and 40,000 dollars a year so it's like that's an investment and if you're not 100% right off the bat 
go do something else. So let's say that you are that. You're like, I'm at a 10, dude. I want to do this. I can't imagine anything else. The next step is learn computers. Get, get Maya. Get the student edition of Maya. It's free. Go to Adobe. You can get it. And I, I talk about that on my website. But get that and just get comfortable. Don't, don't get great at it. I don't want you to spend your time on that. I just want you to be able to understand thinking in 3D, moving objects around, and that's going to help you do the most important thing, which is drawing. My drawings got so much better once I started working in 3D because something in my brain clicked and I started thinking, as a, even though it's a flat piece of paper, I was drawing through the paper. I was seeing things in those other dimensions. So really commit to drawing. And I had my sketchbook and I was horrible. I was so friggin' bad. I go back and I look at my sketchbooks when I was like 16, 17, 18. I'm like, it looks like I threw up spaghetti. It's just all these scribbles. It's horrible. But the only way to get good is to do it, right? So you gotta have that sketchbook and you gotta commit, you know, have, like get your iPhone or whatever cell phone you have and set a little alarm between this time and this time. That's drawing time. Create a block time. And, and you're not gonna be great at first. Get over it. If you're committed, you're going to see you're, and you're going to realize that, that Leonardo da Vinci was, didn't, didn't just get born and start painting the Sistine Chapel. He studied and studied and studied and studied and studied and studied, 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 studied. You know, he spent 20 years just doing his craft before he was awesome. So I see a lot of people that they apply to a college and they don't get in. They're like, oh, I'm terrible. Oh, you're awesome. You can do it, but you just got to keep practicing. So